All right, so Monday, January 11th. Um, anytime we have the numbers supporting magic, we should use them, especially this year, because we are going to have extra, extra, extra moments for supported magic this year, and today is one of those days. So it is a portal day, 111. It's Graceful Heart, Erin. 111, what are you gonna to do today? We are already in the new moon energy that is happening tomorrow evening and into Wednesday, depending on what time zone you're in. And this is gonna be the new moon in Capricorn. This week is chock full of astrological big deals. And since I don't really retain that, um, you know, we'll just say they're big things and I'll tell you the energy I'm feeling about them and then you can go reference that with what's happening astrologically. I can honestly only keep track of the moon stuff. So I'm gonna stay in my lane there and leave the deep astrology to the astrologists. So, um, but that being said, tensions are at a high, big time. We haven't, like us right now, these people here, we haven't experienced this type of revolutionary energy in our generation. So we're kind of coming at this and we, there's, a, there's different feelings coming through that I'm picking up on. Some are that it's like, I don't believe this is really happening and it's not as big of a deal as it feels like. Big fear, this is as big as it feels like, I don't know what to do, I'm kind of paralyzed, and then all kinds of things in the middle of that. Where's the right place to be? There is no right place to be. How do you feel? And that's going to be the theme of this week and the rest of this year. You're gonna to have to get really honest with how you feel because that is going to be the only true barometer for you because you cannot, you can no longer trust outside influences, authority figures, or anything to tell you what to feel. There's not gonna be a um, overarching right answer to fix everything. So we have to go back here. It's all about moving from this masculine energy that's all about using logic, 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 and force, and dropping into the feminine space of using the heart, softening, and receiving information. You are all at this time receiving information. Are you getting it? Are you hearing it? Are you applying it to your life? Are you listening to the little niggles in your brain that say, ooh, maybe do this today, or don't do that today? Are you listening to those things? Because that's your internal guidance system. That's what you need to start quieting down and listening to. When we talk about tapping in and meditating, there up until this point has been the idea that you're meditating to get quiet and ascend, right? You don't need to be quiet to tap in that way. You need to find what works for you that allows information to come in. What reduces mind chatter for you? If it's sitting in lotus position and listening to chants, then do that. But if that does not feel good to you, if it feels distracting or puts you in a place where you feel like you are constantly failing because you can't quiet your mind in that setting, please stop doing it and find another way that allows you to access your own inner knowing system. That could mean going for a walk. It could mean listening to classical music. It could mean cooking. It could mean singing. It could mean reading a book. It doesn't matter. Anything that takes you out of the loop is going to assist you in accessing that space and that is your meditation. We don't need to be so stringent and strict and use only specific archetypes of different activities in order to do them right. We have to let go of that because that's not something that we as humans actually ascribe to. They've been imposed upon us. We all do things uniquely. We all came here to do things uniquely, okay? So find what works for you. I'll tell you what works for me because this might help you. Shower is the place 
where I hop in there and it's almost like my guides have been stockpiling all the messages that they want to give me. And as soon as I hop in that shower, it's like, whoop, there you go, Sarah. Here's this, 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 and this. See you next time. And I've gotten used to that. And so maybe that's our routine now. But when I get into the shower, it's almost like I step out of my life for a minute so I don't hear the noise as much. And so I'm able to just calm down and allow the messages to come through. So find that for yourself this week if you don't have it already. Experiment because finding that place where you can receive is going to be so important for this week and for moving on. Now, traditionally, new moon time is about seeding your intention. And we've had moon cycle after moon cycle that has been increasingly, um, increasingly amped up in energy and importance, right? All of these things are amping up because as we continue to put our collective energies together toward this manifesting, it becomes more and more real. So we are doing it. But at this time, we have to keep doing it. It's not time to slow down. We have to go harder and heavier and bigger. So for this new moon, what are you seeding? What feelings are you seeding? We just had a really, really mm -hmm. profound example of how things are not working anymore last week. What are you gonna plant this week to make sure that that is not the timeline that you live in. What are you going to do? How are you going to affect this energy? And do you believe you have the power to affect this energy? I'm gonna answer it for you. Yes, you do. But if you don't believe it, then it's not true for you. I believe it for you, but you need to believe it too. You need to plug in and feel your power and start moving that energy towards what you want. Feel it, see it, taste it, smell it, touch it. I'm like honking boobies here. But do these things because you need to be in that space now where you are in the cycle of manifesting with the moon. So we're releasing at the full moon and we are planting at the new moon over and over and over and over again, okay? This is going to create momentum like the tides of the waves, okay? The ocean rolling in and out and it's us collectively putting our energies together and understanding how to do this. And that is how we're going to birth this new world by moving our energies in sync with the lunar cycles, manifesting and releasing. So I really want you to push into that feeling right now. I want you to feel your new moon feels because it's a big freaking deal, okay? January is shaping up to be incredibly pivotal, but I wanna to talk to you a little bit about timelines, okay? We are at a place now, and we have been since we started this year and towards the end of last year, my nose is itchy, where there are so many probable timelines that continually cross each other and some get more energy and then lose the energy. Other ones pop in, they pop out. There's just so many of them. And our decisions and our energy, our feelings, dictate which timeline we're hopping into. So when that happens, when there's that timeline shift, the kind of glitch feeling, it changes everything and there's a reshuffle. Okay, so we've had, that I've felt personally, we've had three timeline shifts that I have felt and seen personally since we started 2021. That's three of them. How many more are coming? I don't know, but this week feels very loopy. It feels like there's threads going like this. Think of them like, um, what do you call those things? Jellyfish tentacles. So imagine the jellyfish tentacles are all these different timelines and they're swaying, right? They're swaying, they're moving, they're moving. And which one are you on? Which one are you gonna put your energy into? You have this choice. You can have any timeline you want. 
Yes, there are gonna be collective timelines, but there isn't just gonna be one, and that's the crazy thing, and I, can't, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but there isn't going to be one. There's going to be more than one, and we are choosing where we are going to move our energies into. So that is why I'm saying to you right now that doing your manifesting at the lunar cycles is critical because this is what allows you to make the choice instead of allowing yourself to have choices made for you based on the movement around you. Does that make sense? This is you taking in your sovereignty and stepping into that place of not being a person who is moved around, but instead stepping into creator role. So what timeline do you want? What do you want? It's like that movie, The Notebook. What do you want? Can you answer it? We spent all of last year with me asking you, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And now I'm asking you, what do you want? What do you want? What are you gonna ask for? What are you going to put your energy into? Because this is where we're at now. What timeline are you going to choose? And I am telling you, there isn't just one. And I'm telling you that there isn't a right one, okay? So with that in mind, what do you want? Can you trust yourself to answer that? Can you follow through with doing your moon magic and making it happen? Can you accept that wanting something today does not preclude you from changing your mind tomorrow? Are you okay with that? Are you okay with being fluid and in flow? Are you allowing yourself to be in the present moment? To be right here, okay? Things to ask yourself. Now I'm gonna check these comments real quick and answer them. Um, Jean says, it's so interesting that you picked jellyfish tentacles as ammonites are, um, okay. Jean, it is a little early for me to be pronouncing these things, but I see what you're saying there because you're saying jellyfish connect to ammonites and I've been randomly on this ammonite kick with the spirals. Is that what you mean? And then Stacy says, so should we harness the energy and send it back out into a love intention for humanity? Okay, so excellent, excellent question. Yes, always. That's the first answer because right now it's very easy not to do that, right? It's very easy to say like, we have groups of people that I can't send love to. Send love to everybody always pull in energy and send love out. You're like little care bears around here, okay? Right from your heart center, boom, boom. At the same time, that is not enough because that would be you outputting and not receiving. So we have to make that loop that kind of looks like, um, kind of looks like a figure eight. It needs to go out, curve back in, go out, curve back in, and then there's that, there's that point at the middle of that figure eight where everything intersects and that is you. So you do need to ask for what you want and allow yourself to receive it for what you want. Not everything, and this is gonna sound funny I guess, but not everything needs to have the highest good of every other person in the world in mind. That is not a pointed use of your energy at this time. We need to think more inward because that's how we create the ripples that change everything around us and create these different realities. So asking yourself what feels best for you and then allowing yourself to receive it. The side effect of allowing yourself to receive the goodness for yourself is the ripples that come out and send love out into the world. Does that make sense? So we're deconstructing the notion of being selfish because that is patriarchal and is something we created, just like guilt. So we're letting go of that. Instead, we're saying, I am going to stand here and receive the flow of universal abundance and raw energy that is my birthright to command and create with because you are part of this. What do you want? What do you want? So bring it back here, but yes, holding the high note for the collective 
is what you're talking about and we should always be doing that. Um, sometimes it helps us to do that in a more pointed way, like actually lighting a candle and bringing us collectively together at certain points where we need to uplift the timeline a little bit more, right? And you can feel when that is. Usually when I feel it, I say something to you guys. I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's do this. Like it's, it's a, it's like that feeling of like, okay, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. It's getting a little weak under here. Let's support it. Right. And that's just bringing up the collective vibration. Every time we come together and we like light those candles and we send out love and we feel each other's energy, we are raising the collective vibration. So it's never a bad idea to do that. But I want you guys to seriously, seriously focus on this new moon and ask yourself what you want. And then I want you to ask for it. Okay. And then I want you to be like, oh, and I'll receive it too. A lot of you are doing this already and you're doing it so well and you're already seeing what that means in your life and things shifting. Um, so keep going is what I am saying. We are in this. It is game time. It is pedal to the metal. All systems go. All hands on deck. Like we're here right now. So I'm very excited to be in this week with you because it feels like a it feels like it's going to be one of those weeks somehow that we are going to remember next year or whenever we decide to touch back and say like this is this is where something big happened i'm just feeling that very much so so i'm going to pull a card for you guys from the um the elemental deck and this is going to be um just collective energy for this new moon today and tomorrow, let's say. Um, restoration members, our call is tomorrow, which is Tuesday. It's 6 p.m. Eastern. And if you are not part of restoration and you would like to join forces in manifestation with us, you can click that link and join and you'll get all the things. When you join, you'll also have access to the amazing astrology call, astrology masterclass by Petra Taukert that happened on Friday, which I need to listen to again because my brain was like, whoa. It was so wild. All right, you ready? Hmm. Okay. It's Ladybug. I don't know if you can see this. This is Ladybug for Instagram. Ladybug for Facebook. And I will post this in the Restoration Facebook group. Um, it's number 30. Let's see what it says. Ladybug. This is interesting. Ladybug is in fire energy. Oh my God, you guys are going to laugh. Ladybug attributes. Good luck, past lives, spiritual enlightenment, death and rebirth. Right? Ladybug appearing in your life heralds a time of luck when the seeds that you have planted will start to unfurl and you will see the results of your hard work. Sometimes this good luck comes after a time of darkness. Know that this happened for a reason and going forward, joy and happiness will start to push out the darkness. I'm here for that. I think that's a perfect way to wrap up this morning's little chat. Thank you for listening. I will post this card in the Facebook group. And just a quick reminder, you are all doing such an awesome job. I know this because I can literally feel this. Your energy has been so supportive, so magical, and your hearts are opening and softening. You are doing the things. So keep going. Please drink water today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the new moon call. I love you. Mwah. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow.